What's up guys, Reese here from Reese3D.com. In this video, I'm going to show you how to create wireframe renders and ambient occlusion renders. Now, at this point, you must have already finished your texturing, you must have finished your light lighting and made the final uh, renders as well. And just to make sure that we're not going to disturb the textures and everything that we have created already, I'm going to save this file and save as to create a new file from the same. So for the new file, I'm going to name this as Office Interior and um, I'll call this as Wireframe. By the way, if you want to learn how to create this background, uh, which is an office interior along with table, chairs and stuff like that, I have a full tutorial. I will link them in the description and I will also add them in the cards up to the right corner. Okay, so now that we have made a new file, we're not going to affect any of those uh, textures and stuff that we have already created. So now we're going to just zoom out a bit to select all the objects that we have in our scene, including this little dustbin, which may not even show in our final render. But still, I'm selecting all of them and then I'm going to right click and go to assign new material. Right. And here you need to make sure that you have Arnold rendering engine. And if you have an older version of Maya that is be before 2016 or even older than that, you may not find Arnold rendering engine. So make sure that you have Arnold installed. If you don't have Arnold, there are other methods. Uh, I will uh, link those videos in the description. You can check them out as well. OK, so now let's go to the shader of Arnold and there you will find AI wireframe. Now notice what happens when I do this step, it's actually going to remove all the other textures that we have already created for these uh, objects. So I'm going to click on that. It's going to assign this new material to all these objects that we have in our scene. And now if I go ahead and hit render and make sure that you have Maya Arnold rendering engine turned on because I have Maya software, it won't work. Let's go to Arnold and then hit render once again. There it is. So we have the wireframes rendered right there. But we have a lot of triangles. We don't want that triangles. We want them to be just squares or rectangles. So now what we have to do is make sure that you have the same AI wireframe material selected here and we can change the edge type from triangles to polygons. Now, let's say, for example, you just deselected it and you lost that attribute editor here, right? So what you can do is you can select any of these objects, right? because all these objects have the same material assigned to that. So you can select any objects and go down here, right click and choose the last one that must be your AI wireframe. So go here and there you can actually change the edge type to polygons. So once that is done, let's just pull this up and then we can just do one more render. And before that, I'm going to save this image so that we can actually check how the image looked before. And I'll go ahead and hit render once again. There you go. So now we have all perfect squares, right? Now these looks very uh, dense. That is because we have applied smooth to that. To that. And if you Want, don't want that kind of appearance, you can actually unsmooth those objects. And I can actually select all of them, do an unsmooth here, select all, press one. So that's going to actually unsmooth everything. And I'm going to save this image, make a new render. So we should have the same objects without the smooth uh, applied to them. So we have not the non densed or uh, more spaced out edges. So based on the kind of appearance that you want, whether you want it like this or you want it like this, you can actually pick the different ones. And now once you have finished or once you're satisfied with the final look that you have, you can actually go to file, choose save image. And there we can pick either JPG or PNG or any other formats that you want. OK, so if I click on JPG file. And I can save this as, let's say, uh, Office Wireframe. I already have one file here. So I'll just overwrite that, hit save. That's it. So now if I go back to my, uh, my project, um, 
default and there it should be inside my images. So if I open that file, I should get the JPG file just like that. Now, if you want to have the same file in a higher resolution, for example, you can also go to the render settings, okay, which is right here. And in the render settings, you can actually increase the resolution. So by default, we have HD 720. You can go for full HD, that is HD uh, 1080, or you can go for a custom resolution based on the width and height that you want to uh, mention here. Okay, so now this time, if I just make the render, I'll just save once again and make another render. This is going to take a little longer time compared to the previous one because we have more resolution building up here. Okay, so this is the previous one and this is the next one. You should see that the, the render time is exactly doubled, right? So here it is uh, six seconds and here it is three seconds. So half HD rendered in three seconds and full HD rendered in uh, six seconds. So if you want to have the higher resolution image, you can do that and save this image. This will come in the higher resolution. So that's creating a rendered image of the wireframe using Arnold rendering engine. Okay, now let's create the second one that is called ambient occlusion. Now to create an ambient occlusion, it is almost the same process, exactly the same way that we did for uh, the uh, wireframe, but instead of assigning um, the wireframe material, we're going to assign an ambient occlusion material. So click on this guy, and that's going to basically assign the ambient occlusion material onto all these objects that we have. And if I go back to my render settings, and I want to save this image and make a new render. So this time it is going to be an ambient occlusion. So that's exactly what we wanted. But you will notice that we have a lot of grains here, right? A lot of uh, little noise and stuff that you can see here. So the next step is to fix those noises and stuff. And I think uh, the non-smooth version doesn't look that nice here. So what I'll do is I'll actually select all these guys and smooth them, okay? So um, I don't wanna smooth these uh, walls and stuff. So I'm gonna um, yep, leave those things, leave those things, leave this as well. Um, I can have the curtain to be smooth. I think that's it. Press three. Okay, so that looks good, I guess. I'll make one more render here. Go back, save this image, make a new render, and we can check out if that's exactly what we wanted. Yep, that's perfectly fine. Good, but still we need to remove those noises. And these noises are actually created by uh, having low number of samples for the ambient occlusion. So I'll just hit escape key just to interrupt the rendering at this point. And I'm gonna select any of these objects and go back to these ambient occlusion material here. And there you will find the samples, okay? So by default it is three, just to have uh, testing out how to find, how, to, how the ambient occlusion looks. And then we can actually bump this up to 10. And now if I go back, I'm gonna save this image just to compare, just for comparison's sake. And I'm gonna make a new render. Now keep in mind, increasing the samples is actually going to increase the render time. So uh, you need to be really patient in getting your final look. So through the computer magic, I'm gonna actually fast forward in editing. All right, so that's the final result of our ambient occlusion render. Now, the render time is actually three minutes and 35 seconds. So that's actually because I increased the render size. I made from uh, 720 HD to 1080 HD. So if you have 720 HD, it should have rendered it half of this time. So that completes this tutorial. If you have any questions, you can ask them in the comment section below and stay tuned. Have a nice day. Bye-bye.